when Ether Channel and Layer 3 collide. When most people think of Ether Channel or lag interfaces, they think of a Layer 2 connection to where you have ports bundled together and powers of two, so two ports, four ports, eight ports, spliced together at Layer 2. Again, you've got a trunk, you've got VLANs going across, that kind of thing. Uh, and you gain the benefits of having multiple interfaces combined together rather than having spanning tree block one of them. Now, you truly never gain all the bandwidth capacity on any one connection. For instance, if I have a computer up here sending to a computer down at the bottom, it's not going to get two gigabits per second throughput. It will only get the benefits of one of those channels because Ether channel uses a source and destination MAC address load bal balancing algorithm. But the beauty of this is you can have these guys getting their full gigabit per second between them. Then you can have two other devices, maybe two servers connecting in and communicating together using the other link and getting the full gigabit per second there. So you do gain an overall capacity increase using Ether channel. Now, what most people think when they think layer three Ether channel is they think, okay, so we've created a switch virtual interface for VLAN 10, maybe on both of these guys, right? And we use maybe HSRP or VRP redundancy mechanisms to, you know, combine those together, make them redundant, and they're communicating over that, that link. Actually, that's not layer 3 Ether channel. That's still layer 2 Ether channel. Layer 3 Ether channel is where we go into the virtual interface that's created when you set up the Ether channel. And that is actually, literally, a port channel. We go into the port channel virtual interface and we turn off switching. We do the no switch port and then we assign an IP address to where we literally have a higher capaci capacity routed interface, like a point-to-point -point interface, but with these two points being combined together between these two switches. And now you have a high bandwidth routed link between them. Let me show you how it works. I've just brought up my CBT switch one. I'm going to go into global configuration mode. And unlike a typical Ether channel configuration, which consists of me going under the interfaces and configuring them first, and I should mention this, I actually have this switch cross-connected to CBT switch two on two separate interfaces, Fast Ethernet 023 and 24. And I've got no configuration, at least that I remember, <laughs> underneath either one of them. Good. Usually for Ether channel, you go in, configure all the attributes of the interface, and then join them to a port channel. This time, I'm going to go interface, port channel, and I'll just use one. All right. Underneath here is where I put my layer three configuration. I'm going to do uh, no switch port. IP address 172.16.1.1. We'll make this the switch one side of it, right? And then I go back and I do my interface range, fast Ethernet 0 slash 23 through 24. And I say channel group one. And you can use PAGP or P, uh, LACP, uh, uh, thinking and talking at the same time. I, I Whatever uh, protocol you'd like to. But I'm going to say channel one. Uh, and we'll say the mode of this, I'll use PAGP. I'll use desirable. Right, to have this guy communicate with the other side. Uh, now, this guy comes up and says, hey, whoa, 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 this is the port being layer two and the port channel being layer three or vice versa. That is one of the things that you need to remember is the major attributes of the physical interface and the port channel have to match. So in this case, I have to do a no switch port before it'll take this command and join it to the port channel. Right. Okay. So we've got one side uh, at least configured. It's not. It's not running as of yet because the other side doesn't have uh, PAGP going on. So I'm going to go over to CBT switch two, global config mode, port channel one. I'll do it on this side and uh, oh, sorry, interface. I've lost myself. There we go. Interface port channel one. No switch port. IP address one seventy two sixteen one dot two. Good. Interface range fast Ethernet 0 slash 23 through 24. We'll do no switch port, match those characteristics between the physical and logical interface. And then I'll do the channel group, cha channel group one mode. And we can do on desirable, whatever we want to do. So I'll, I'll do uh, desirable. Right? Actually, can't do on. We'll do desirable or auto uh, if we want to use either one of those. And so it now flips them, negotiates the uh, port channel between the two. I actually left EIGRP running from one of my other nuggets, and you can see, bam, it comes up automatically. Now we've got this port channel configured between the two as a layer three interface. From CBT switch two, I can ping to the other side. Looking good. I can do a show ether channel, see how everything's running there. I can see the group state is labeled as a layer three. Currently two ports active going on in there. I can do a show PAG P 
P. And let's just do uh, neighbor. And I can see CBT switch one. We've negotiated on uh, these two interfaces, fast Ethernet 0 slash 23 and 24. We are looking good. You now know how to configure a layer three ether channel interface. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.